uh, my travel mic taped to, or taped, I have it uh, 3M hooked to my iMac screen right now. <laughs> so it's either, it's either that we get good audio or yeah. I'm in the, <laughs> I'm in the frame. So we'll, uh, we'll experiment. It'll be great. I like the, the idea of you just like shoving your face right up to the camera every time you have to talk. Hello. Yeah, that's, that's not great. I'm just going to sit here and I'm sorry that the audio will be slightly weird. Be okay. Be okay. All right. I think we're ready. Yep. Do you want to start yeah. us off? Yeah, I'm going to do it as soon as I get up the nerve. <laughs> Thanks, listeners who have already tuned in to our insanity. It is December 14th, 2017. The I More Show is hitting episode 585. And as you might have guessed, this is the I More Show. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Serenity Caldwell, managing editor at I More. And joining me today, unsurprisingly, uh, from the is it snowy where you are, Micah? It's snowing where I am. Uh, I wish just, it like, was snowing where I was. Uh, where I am. It, looks, it looks like you're enjoying a snowy <laughs> wonderland, regardless of your uh, ever, ever so appropriate themed holiday decorations. I I'm hoping that the uh, spirit of Christmas will cure whatever bug I seem to be coming down with. So I apologize, <laughs> listeners, if my voice sounds a little Amy Winehouse today. Um, <laughs> rest her soul. Uh, Never but, apologize for that. <laughs> Santa Claus is, is going to heal me is my hope. So I've got my festive Santa hat on for those of you who are listeners of the show as opposed to <laughs> viewers. So it's, a good, it's a good look. <laughs> also joining us today, uh, no surprise, uh, is Miss Lori Gill, who is thematically dressed because uh, I forgot to mention, in addition to it being December 14th, which happens to be my birthday, it is also about to be the birthday of a really exciting thing, which is The Last Jedi is coming out today! <laughs> Technically tomorrow, but uh, release dates don't mean anything anymore because the they're just showing the movie early. The world is so weird now. If it comes out on December, it used to be that it comes out on December 15th. So you could watch the very first viewing at 12.01 AM uh, and on certain movies that were really big. But now it comes out on December 15th, but you can see the movie at seven o'clock the night before. I don't understand how that works. Why don't they just Apparently say enough? Uh, I think uh, I think the twelve oh one showings were designed for people uh, by a person who was in their late twenties, and I think <laughs> as they got children and got older, they're like, you know what, twelve oh one is kind of hard for a babysitter. Maybe we'll just do seven p.m. The baby. I love we'll that get, theory. We'll get that money. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great theory. Yeah, that makes sense. I'd be yeah, out there at twelve oh one. I had to. I had to. Oh, always. My mom and I used to go to 1201, get this, 1201 Pixar screenings. Oh, yeah. that's yeah. the cutest got, thing. Oh, it was really fun. I did, I was really, really sad when I learned uh, when I moved back west or back east to go to college that there were no midnight Pixar screenings in Western Massachusetts. Oh. So I'm just from, I remember driving to a theater at 11.50 for Wally -E and being so excited only to realize that their 12.01 showing was a 12.01 p.m. Oh, oh, that's heartbreaking. They tricked yeah. you. That's terrible. Oh, man. Trixie. Anyway, are you excited for The Last Jedi? Are you spoiler free? I'm I'm spoiler free. Yeah, spoiler free is the way to be. Yeah. yeah. So I like to um, hear official information coming straight from you know StarWars.com or something like that, and then I I hide the rest. I think I might have mentioned this before that I had a bad experience where somebody had casually mentioned something about well, what I heard was. Um, I don't even want to spoil it just in case someone hasn't seen episode one. <laughs> um, oh no, I guess it would have been episode three because there's like a, a twist in episode three kind of that. Um, <gasps> Did Snape kill Dumbledore? Revenge. Yeah. I know, it, was, it was actually episode hey, two. Spoiler. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so like because that was that was told to me ahead of time, then when the reveal happened, I was super bummed because it was like, oh, I. I knew that. So now I try to avoid any just sort of chatter on the internet because even if people are just kind of making up theories, somebody's going to be right about something. So I just you kind never of never know, and then you it. have it in your head. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 
normally I, I was actually talking with a pal about this yesterday. I'm like, normally I'm, I'm kind of eh, on spoilers. I'm nonchalant and I'm kind of, you know, I'm the person who, if I haven't seen the TV show and I really want to know what's, what's happened, I'll read the recap before I get the chance to watch the show just because I'm curious. Uh, but when it comes to Star Wars, I feel like Star Wars is, is a special bubble. Is a special bubble where it's, it's just so joyous to be able to experience that in the, on the big screen for the first time. And I think also because Star Wars is known for its twists uh, and like little, and little character moments and things like that, that I don't want any of that. I want to be fresh on that. And I also don't want to hear what's still being left dangling plot thread wise, because I don't want to, I don't want my brain to go into full on analysis mode before I even get a chance to see it the first time. Yep. Which is to say, hi, listeners, if you're <laughs> reading in the comments and you've seen The Last Jedi already, if you spoil it, we will send drones to your house and hunt you. So please, Ooh. please be nice. That and they will... a nice, nice kill. That wasn't a death threat. It was they just won't be, a... Yeah, they won't be deadly drones. They will yeah. just have silly string uh, launchers <laughs> and you will be silly strung for oh. the rest of your life. What is that? So cute. I've oh, talked to uh, Georgia. Uh, oh, that's so cute. Georgia Dow about this before. <laughs> for some reason, I, like spoilers for the most part, I can I can put up with them. You were talking sort of like going back and looking at or looking at a show recap before you watch it, um, that kind of thing. I will I will do too occasionally. And anytime someone has like maliciously tried to spoil something by making it you know go across for some I, I don't know I just um, I can I can see films and see television shows where the end has already been revealed. Now I don't actively seek those out and try to avoid them as much as possible. But if for whatever reason it happens, I I guess I am blessed in the sense that my brain doesn't go into overdrive sort of trying to piece everything apart. Like I can uh, suspend disbelief and I guess knowledge in the moment as I'm watching and just pretend like I don't know and still be surprised. So You're lucky. <laughs> except, except I have to know and thank God there's a website. Um, I pretty much just don't watch any movies that have dogs in them because I know the dog will die and I can't, I cannot, I would like not be able to eat for a week if I saw a movie. Like oh, I, can't, no. I, can't, I can't watch movies where dogs die or, and, or even animals. So you haven't so, seen Old Yeller apparently. <laughs> well, I did when I was or younger. John Wick. <laughs> yeah. Or, and like even, uh, well, okay. There's a, there's a film that I'm not going to say the name of, but you both know it. And the robot dies and it broke my heart, like seeing the robot die even. I don't know, there's something about wow. adorable, like innocent creatures. In this case, the robot was innocent. And it's like, I don't I don't wanna see them hurt. So anyway, uh, when that happens, like please spoil me on those things so I don't end up having heartbreak for, for a month so or something. You said that there's a website. Is there a website you can go to it's where- called, like, The dog dies at the end, I think. Is it's, the name of the website? Oh my gosh! Uh, so they just tell I mean, you it's upright or upfront. Doesthedogdie.com yeah. dot com um, will tell you which movies uh, the dog dies in, so that you you can be aware of that before uh, you go in and see it. There also does does the horse die? Are there clowns? Are there strobe effects? So it it helps with you know any sort of fears that you might have or That's or amazing. triggers and things like that. Um, you know, shaving and cutting or vomit. A lot of people have different triggers. And for me, a dog dying just rips my soul in two. So I, I genuinely do. I won't watch movies that have the dog die because it just, but no, I don't, I don't want to, don't want to see that. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't no. think there's going to be any dogs in the Star Wars universe at all. So. I know, but that one little but there creature. Are porgs. Yeah. I the por like, if a pork dies, I'm already getting like teary eyed just saying, if a pork dies. I mean it's about this size, I feel like it might get stepped on and I'm not ready to see that. <laughs> not, I'm not okay with it. Uh, yeah, but what I will say is that if you like us are concerned about viewing spoilers or uh, if worse, you're not seeing it tonight, you're seeing it maybe later this weekend, we did put together a really nice article on how to avoid spoilers and stay spoiler free. Uh, there are a number of tools you can use including mute filters and a Chrome extension. Uh, so we recommend checking that out. And uh, there are there are no spoilers in my spoiler free article. There is a porg, but I feel like our porgs off the spoiler list. I feel like they're in. They've been in enough trailers that it's not. Uh, yeah, they've if been in see, trailers and they've got their own toys. Trailer, if you're if you're going full uh, uh, John Syracuse and avoiding trailers and things like that too, then 
that's technically a spoiler, but for most people who've seen the trailers, it's uh, not, I don't think it's a spoiler. Yeah, I feel like even Syracuse has been spoiled on Porgs. I feel, they're just, <laughs> they're true. so widespread at this point. Yeah, yeah they're, it's, they're it's, sort of a, a whole separate group from Star Wars itself at this point. <laughs> yeah, they're like the new favorite character of Star Wars. And um, to follow up on the, um, if you don't want spoilers, check out I'm More. Um, if you are thinking of a costume you might want to wear, um, to dress up to see the Last Jedi, we have a, a little how to how to deck your deck out for for uh, your Star Wars premiere. Um, my personal suggestion and what I'll be doing it's it's called Disney bounding, and it's basically where you just wear your everyday clothes, but they represent one of your favorite characters. Um, I'm Disney bounding as Ray, oh, so wow. I have um, a big long scarf and a white shirt, and I have a pair of brown stretch pants and some tall tan boots, and that's my Disney band, like just subtle representations of your favorite character. You know, the average person might not even notice it, but if you're at a Star Wars premiere, people are gonna be able to tell. I have been doing this for years, and I did not know that there was an official name for it, and I'm also a little bit perturbed that Disney is in the title. <laughs> It's it's only because so in uh, when you go to Disneyland, Disneyland you're not allowed to wear costumes because that's oh, confusing yeah, yeah, for yeah. the children. So, so a few years ago, people would just sort of wear outfits that represented their favorite characters, and that caught on, and it just became it's it's kind of a new name and a new trend, um, but it's kind of it's spread out past just Disney, so that's why it's huh. kind of called that. So that's very clever. Yeah, I'm actually. I'm representing yep. a little Jin Erso today. Um, yes, you were missing your scarf, though. I am. Well, it got a little. It got a little hot in here. I should. I should grab it. Uh, yeah, I have a. I have Jin Erso jacket, so I feel like it's. I have Jin Erso jacket and Ray boots, so it's just ah. gonna be a. It's gonna be an amalgam uh, this this time around. That works. Uh, but enough. Yeah, enough about Star Wars because we could spend this entire podcast talking about how much we love Star Wars. Uh, but instead, why don't we talk about, uh, you know, a, a vote that could prevent us from watching Star Wars without paying extra money? I uh, like how I slid that That's in. That's a great segue uh, there. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so the FCC is set to vote on net neutrality on reclassifying uh, the internet providers, not as common carriers, but as information services, uh, basically rewinding the decision of 2016. Uh, which we have all spoken at length about why this decision is terrible. Uh, but Lori, you want to go into a little bit of detail on even if, and it's probably a, a pretty big if unless Congress intervenes, uh, if they decide to to go through with this and pass uh, pass this uh, this it's not even a piece of legislation. It's basically a memorandum. Um, saying that carriers are now information services. Why this isn't the end of the road uh, by a long shot for people who care about net neutrality. But why isn't this the end of the road? <laughs> yes, why isn't this the end of the road? Because we do have hope. There's always uh, hope. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the hope would be that it's if if it's repealed, there's still um, ways that that they can uh, that the that we can fight it. That the um, government can try to stop that from happening. Um, so, okay, so right now the vote hasn't happened yet. So um, by the time you guys hear this, I'm sure it will have happened. Um, let's see here if I can find some information that would be helpful. I'm looking on the internet right yeah. now. <laughs> the internet, which is, uh, yeah, which you might not be able to do with that. <laughs> I know. So yeah. yeah, it's all it's all happening right now, which does make it uh, more of a difficult topic. I mean, this is something that's been uh, debated for quite some time. And Laura, you brought up a good point earlier when we were just chit chatting about net neutrality. And the fact is, we didn't have these protections in place until the Obama administration. And before that, it was just sort of like an unspoken rule of the internet that everybody got to play on the same playing field. And it wasn't until certain companies started to come along like AT&T and Verizon and, and not necessarily come along, but get to the place where they are now. And these, these giant companies are looking at ways to, and T-Mobile as well, are looking at ways to prioritize certain content over others. And it means that the web, which used to be sort of a 
a lawless swamp, but a swamp that grows flowers occasionally, I guess is a good way to put it. Um, it's turning it into an industrial complex where if you have the money to pay, then you're going to get in front of the most people and quicker. And so, you know, T-Mobile does things like uh, if you buy their services and, and stream over their their infrastructure, then you can get certain content for free, which will probably have you watching Netflix over maybe some other streaming service that came along because Netflix doesn't cost you extra money because of the way the T-Mobile has it set up. And that's just one example. But there are plenty of examples where in the future, if we don't have these net neutrality protections in place, uh, a giant website like the New York Times could pay uh, your cable provider to make sure that the content loads quickly and gets sort of priority over some small site uh, like a personal blog that would then take longer to load and finally get to you because those smaller blogs can't afford to pay that. And so rolling back these protections that have just sort of been put into place as everything's coming together is obviously not a fantastic thing. And what's interesting too is that there are many Republican lawmakers as well who are, or not many, but there are some Republican lawmakers as well that are coming out sort of, hey, maybe we should think about this before we vote on it and, and try to get rid of it. And you see many tech companies and many uh, publications and many sort of online media companies all coming out and saying, this is not a good thing. And that's why sites like Tumblr will show you, you know, loading bars. And I think Dropbox took, uh, you know, tw or was it Slack? Slack took a whole day to upload a file to try to show you the difference between them. Um, but those inconveniences are real examples of what could happen if uh, net neutrality takes effect. So this is a big deal. And um, it's, it, despite the outcry that I think exists, they're still pushing it forward because I think they just want to be able to do something is, is, is see, sadly seems to be part of the reasoning behind it. Yeah, well, and I mean, it's a long standing process, unfortunately, and that the FCC has had, you know, you hear about the revolving door uh, policy, which is to say that uh, in a lot of government positions, because people have necessary industry expertise, they might start out in the industry that they end up commissioning later on, uh, which is the case of Ajit Pai and a couple of the other folks on the FCC who formerly worked for Verizon or Charter or Comcast or something like that, then they end up in the FCC or they start out in government positions and then after they finish their tenure with the FCC, they go to a, uh, a telecommunications company, sometimes with big fat bonuses, uh, and that doesn't really help either because it, uh, you know, uh, I, I feel for the people in this position because if you're, you know, if your specialization is in broadcast law, there really are only so many places you can work. Uh, and once you've done, you know, your, your FCC terms, it's not, you know, it's not like the Supreme Court. Uh, so they're, they're you know, like, I obviously want people to have jobs when they, when they specialize in certain fields. Uh, but this is a big problem when it comes to net neutrality, because if you have people who by their very, you know, their very job, they have special interests in the stuff that they are legislating, it becomes a, a lot trickier. Um, I know that, you know, people are bringing that up. Uh, there's also the issue of just the, a lot of this has already been fought over. And in fact, it was fought quite ferociously in 2015 when the Obama administration even said that they were considering putting these rules into place. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some lower court decisions that essentially say that what the FCC is about to do is not is not okay, um, and I mean that's a that's a generalization. Essentially, what the FCC is trying to do is shunt responsibility back to the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission, uh, so that they make those calls uh, rather than preempting people. Oh, uh, rather than preempting people, then we will get to the point where we're instead, unfortunately, uh, trying to legislate after the fact, uh, which is not great for, again, like you brought up, Micah, startups that maybe don't have a ton of cash. Um, and all of a sudden, we have been joined by a bunch of other iMore staffers, including Renee Ritchie and Joe Keller and Chella uh, So, Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. It's so airport. <laughs> Hi. 
So um, uh, Serenity did mention this at the beginning of the podcast, but it is Serenity's birthday today. And as a surprise, <laughs> we've invited everyone on the show to wish her happy birthday. Oh, <laughs> Do we get to sing? Do we get to sing? Oh, yeah, my let's... lordy. Okay. You know, Mike, Mike T, he really wants to be here as well, but Hangouts is causing issues for him, and every time he clicks to open the link, it's just going to a new tab with nothing in it. But he's oh, no. sending you happy birthday wishes as well. Oh, wait, he's here. Oh, wait, there's uh, the link. <laughs> happy, Mike's happy, happy, happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Serenity. Oh, happy birthday. Oh, thanks, happy guys. Birthday. Can we start singing now? Yes. yes. You can if you want. Who's birthday to you? Happy birthday, to, happy birthday to, you. to you. Happy birthday, dear Serenity. Happy birthday to you. Oh, yes. The lag of Hangouts makes that exceptional. That was excellent. Quartet, Micah. Don't, don't that was excellent. <laughs> You're right, Renee. We're going to record a Christmas album birthday, next. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to remember that till the end of my days, guys. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> if you think the rest of us could play the ukulele, then it would be even better. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly what we're missing, just accompaniment. It has nothing to do with, <laughs> with our, our talent level yeah. or anything. We're just that's used to having an instrument in the group. <laughs> <laughs> I might have scored your birthday treats. Oh, ah, ah, sugar fina. Oh, that's dangerous. They have a vending machine here. Wait, a sugar fina vending machine? Happy birthday. What What magical <laughs> airport Happy are you birthday. in? I'm going to eat this treat in front of you. Yeah, LaGuardia is not so magical, but this makes up for it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't go to LaGuardia even for a sugar fina vending machine, but that's still really cool. <laughs> Thank you, guys. That was, that was really nice. Thanks, everybody. Well, thank you all for joining us for that, thank especially you. in the Great. middle of net neutrality, which is sort of uh, <laughs> so depressing. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, Enjoy the rest of the show. Bye, Fun, guys. <laughs> Happy birthday. Bye. Thank you. Oh yeah. Now, now I feel uh, much less saddened about the impending <laughs> net neutrality. Just... <laughs> Thanks, I'm more staff. That that brought a smile to my face. Yeah, that was uh, nice. Yeah. So so I guess the point I was trying to make before before we got that lovely interlude, Lori, is that um there are some potentials for despite as as bleak and as sad as it might seem, uh there are some potentials for legal action to to keep this from becoming an actual uh guideline for for telecommunications companies. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of companies, including uh, the Internet Association Trade Group, who are currently weighing their legal operate or their legal options according to a Reuters report, along with public knowledge and common cause and free press. Um, there, there are quite a few companies that are committed to to legislating this in court if necessary. But I think the the most important thing, honestly. And this is something that I don't know if, if we're ever going to get it through in this if, with Congress in this state right now. Uh, but a bipartisan legislation that just says the FCC has the authority to regulate net neutrality, or take that off the table and just say these are these are the laws regarding the mm -hmm. internet. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Although that could backfire too, because then it could be these are the laws <laughs> regulating who's, the internet. Who's right, yeah, who's writing the laws? Yeah. And then we go back to the legal option. So it's just, it's, it's a circle. It's messy. Yeah. It's an Earl Burroughs of shame right now. <laughs> There's uh, the title. Yep, <laughs> yep. Uh, so in conclusion. Uh, birthdays are really, great and that neutrality. Yeah, birthdays, birthdays are great. And you know what? I, um, I'm going to take our, our Last Jedi victory uh as uh, as my moral victory for today and hope that ajit pai or congress or somebody has a change of heart and is like maybe we should delay this or uh, think of something else uh and if not i am going to continue to support uh the groups that are fighting this um through legislation if necessary or through uh through legal action if necessary amen yeah
and and don't yeah there's lots of organizations that if if this is repealed there's lots of organizations that you can donate money to that can help fund the kind of legal battle that will ensue so if if at the end of today um net neutrality is repealed find whatever organizations are trying to like fight against it and donate to them because they could use the money but my question serenity if if net neutrality is repealed, are you going to get an iMac Pro? <laughs> <laughs> well, before that before, might you, have answer even that been question, before you answer that question, that is a very good question. <laughs> I'd like for you to ponder it while while I tell everybody about our friends at Mint Sim. If you want free first class shipping on any Mint Sim purchase, then you're going to type in "I am free ship" when you check out. Now, let me tell you a little bit about what Mint Sim is. It is an awesome MVNO. That is a mobile virtual network operator that basically gives you the opportunity to pick and choose exactly what kind of phone service you'd like. So how much do you usually pay each month for phone service? It's probably a lot. Well, you probably would like to pay less, I can imagine. And Mint Sim lets you pay much, much less. And you still get that awesome premium wireless service, including 4G LTE high speed data. It works just like your traditional wireless service, and MVNO is just works just the same, but you pay much less because you get to choose what you want. It's like bulk shopping. Like you go to the store and get, you know, a whole package of hot dogs as opposed to just one at the, the street vendor. And by doing so, you end up saving a lot of money. So you can get five gigabytes of data for three months, and that's just 20 bucks per month. If you think about it, if you look at your bill, your bill's probably like 90 bucks a month or something like that. This is gonna get you five gigs for three months at just $20 per month. And there's currently an offer for three months free when you buy three months. That is incredible. And my favorite thing about Mint Sim is that you can bring your own device. So as long as you have an unlocked phone that's compatible with Mint Sim's network, which you just go onto their website and you type in some information, it'll tell you whether your stuff is compatible. You can bring your own phone. You don't have to get one from Mint Sim, but you can if you would like to. It's a great way to shop clever for premium wireless service so you're going to go to mintsim.com to get your mint sim card and right now you can get that sim card shipped to you absolutely free if you use the promo code i am free ship that's i m f r e e s h i p at checkout there's no fuss no muss and no commitment just a sim card and a plan that saves you money all with that adorable little cute fox uh, this is the, the, the Mint Sim mascot. So thank you so much to Mint Sim for sponsoring iMore. Now, Serenity, if, <laughs> regardless of, of the net neutrality decision, are you getting an iMac Pro? <laughs> oh man, unless someone's getting it for my birthday. No. There you uh, go. Uh, I, am, I am not getting a Mac Pro uh, because I no longer do the kind of video editing work necessary to, to warrant it. However, if I did still work in that industry, I would put all of my money down on the table and be like, give me the Mac. Give me the Mac. Uh, the multi-threaded processes on the iMac Pro, which is to say, there are a lot of cores, and they are really good at rendering things very fast. Uh, there, there are a lot of benefits for people who are in pro industries who might be interested in having a little bit more power than the aging 2013 Mac Pro can provide. Uh, and want a bit more juice than just a portable Mac can provide either. Um, what's really nice about the iMac in general, aside from the fact that it comes in space gray, <laughs> so pretty, so pretty. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, it's uh, the, as I said, it goes up to 18 cores, uh, which is kind of crazy uh, for an iMac. It's uh, here to four, and honestly, kind of crazy for any of Apple's computers, even uh, the. 2013 Mac Pro only went up to 12. <laughs> 2013. Uh, uh. Yeah, 20, exactly. A whole four years ago. So hopefully the cores have, impre have increased. Uh, but we'll also get up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4 
RAM, which is also wow. pretty insane. 128 gigs. When I first read that, I'm like, that can't, that can't be. That's right. like a hard drive, right? No, that's yeah, RAM. I, <laughs> I, mean, I remember when it was really exciting that you had eight gigabytes of RAM before, <sighs> like loading that up, loading up your iBook. You're like, yeah, I got the, I got the two thousand dollar extra eight gigs. <laughs> Uh, so now you can pay twenty four hundred dollars for one hundred eight twenty eight gigs. I think I think that's the cost. Uh, but it's certainly a lot of money to upgrade your RAM, and a lot more money to upgrade to a four terabyte solid state hard drive. Because you know sometimes you really need that internal storage. Uh, actually, you do sometimes for rendering. But uh, yeah, and then you can upgrade the graphics card for a paltry, I think, six hundred dollars. So it's not in comparison. It's like, oh, only six hundred dollars. Yeah, sure, pile that on there. Uh, so, Serenity, have you have you actually like done the math on like a fully upgraded how much it would cost if you do if you max it out? It's something like a uh, twelve thousand dollars. Oh my god! Yeah, I can I can buy a car for that. Not a very yeah. good one, but I could buy yeah. a car for that. But again, uh, I, I think that it has to be taken in context because the average user should not buy this computer. No, you don't should need not. it. Not even a little bit. You know, I saw I, Renee I make a joke about if if it's if people who want space gray will like want to get this machine, don't get the, this machine if you just want a space gray computer, for the love of God. It will come. Well, it might not. But I mean, color wear. There are options for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so here's the thing. This is a beautiful computer. The Space Gray computer and the Space Gray accessories are amazing. And goodness knows we will see a gray market, uh, no pun intended, on Space Gray accessories on eBay because you can buy, uh, you can buy both the trackpad and the mouse uh, at, at lunch, but you cannot buy the Space Gray accessories after that point. So chances are, People will be buying a lot of a lot of extra trackpads or extra mice, and then suffering and selling them on the side to help finance their purchase. Uh, at least that's my prediction. Uh, but going back to sort of the nuts and bolts of this thing, if you are a professional working in graphic design, three D rendering, uh, film editing, film production, pre viz, three D. Uh, and you don't have monitors, like you you would prefer an all-in-one system, this is a pretty darn impressive system to, to pick up, uh, especially considering that it has, I mean, it has enough Thunderbolt 3 ports to hook up two additional 5K monitors, so you could have a triptych of 5K, uh, which is, I don't know, two 5K monitors is like 21 million pixels, so add another couple million pixels to that and, and you get some really beautiful, beautiful imagery. Uh, yeah, it's uh, this is an incredibly nice computer for for those people and uh, and developers as well. It's it's bound to say we don't talk about iOS and Mac developers a whole lot, despite the fact that they make up a huge portion of people who buy <laughs> Mac. Uh, but they hopefully this will this will be a very nice computer for them and hopefully a a nice middle ground between having to buy a fully, you know, open compartmental Mac Pro if it ever ships next year or the, the year after. We'll see. Well, I think they, they said 2018, right? So yeah. Well, they said the next few years, so it could be 2018 or 2019. They haven't, and they're still it's still on track. Uh, of course, our Renee Ritchie, uh, who you saw very briefly on the podcast slash video cast uh, about. 10 minutes ago, he actually was just in New York City to get a glimpse of uh, a more in-depth glimpse of the iMac Pro and talk to some developers and folks who have played around with it quite uh, quite extensively. Uh, and he has a really good kind of hands-on um, impressions piece with between playing with it himself and talking to them. Uh, and that I feel like will help you, you know, if you're on the fence about whether or not you want to buy this, that should help. Uh, if you want more information, we have our buyer's guides, which are going live today about, should you really buy 128 gigabytes of RAM? That, <laughs> is it worth, is it worth the price of a MacBook Pro to put in more RAM for your computer? <laughs> that is a question we have to answer in this day and age. It's kind of, yeah. it's kind of crazy, but no, it is a, I, I personally think it's a very good computer, um, for pros and a good in between. Obviously it's not going to suit everybody's needs. 
Um, but between the improvements to ports and the improvements to the, you know, the onboard processor and everything else, you've got, you've got a really impressive, you've got a really impressive piece of kit here. Um, well, one, Micah, Lori, do either of you want or are going to buy an iMac Pro? Yeah, I just uh, sold two cars that I that fell off a truck uh, somewhere, and I'm selling those, and I will be funding my iMac Pro purchase. I think it's a beautiful machine. Um, I have no need for it, and therefore, there are things that I have no need for. Um, I could probably reach out and grab something right now. <laughs> I didn't need to buy these uh, candelabra LED bulbs, but they save me money in the long run, and I like having LED everywhere. Uh, that's a purchase I didn't need to make, but I chose to. It was still within the bounds of like something I'm still going to get, despite the fact that I don't need it. This is so far out of those bounds that even I, <laughs> who has such an impulse buy mentality, can't even like that. No, I, I, I don't, I don't need it. Uh, and I don't even like, I don't, I don't want it. I covet the space gray. Um, but the machine itself, it's just like, it would be wasted in, in my arms. It would be wasted. Um, so yeah, I, again, it's really cool. I'm glad that it exists. I'd like to see some sort of I guess case studies, um, people using it, and people who need it using it and putting it to its, you know, putting it through its paces and and you know where it did well. Um, but as for me, I'd rather, that's where my focus would be, just sort of seeing people who need it use it and uh, getting joy out of that. Yeah, I, I, it, it's just too much computer for for me. Um, I've had to justify buying the iMac that I have. <laughs> um because even that's a little too much for me because i don't do a lot of graphics rendering or image editing or movie editing or anything like that so um going imac pro really would be just push and just like both of you it's it's really all about the the color <laughs> that's the only thing that i'm that i want just because the the computer itself is just too it's too much beast for me I'll, although what what a new question I will posit if if it were only three hundred dollars more than an iMac would you would yes. you get it? <laughs> that was a, yeah. that was a quick answer. Yes. <laughs> so even I, though yeah. even though it's too much computer for both for all three of us, you would still get too much computer if it were just a few hundred dollars more just because of the color. I would not. Well, I would not get too much computer. I Wait. Think. So three hundred dollars only gets us the color. It doesn't get us all the, like the the better stuff inside. Well, no. It would be so. It would be the same iMac Pro. The, so the the five thousand dollars starting price iMac Pro, uh, exactly oh, the way that is. What if it was a twenty? if it was just five hundred dollar starting instead? Price? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I would like to talk to Apple's engineers and find out where the uh, physics hole they just pulled that out of was. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't need a new desktop Mac right now. Um, so even if it, honestly, even if it was affordable, I think I would shy away from it because I just got a new MacBook Pro and my new, my MacBook Pro is more, more or less enough for me. Um, but I could see that being very appealing. And let's be honest, if I was in the market for a new iMac, uh, paying $300 more for space, I would do it. I'm I am vain and I like my electronics to match. I'm a horrible person. <laughs> well, then um, Micah would need the uh, rose gold. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Except now my dad gum iPhone doesn't match. Um, yeah. But it, yeah, it'd be really cool to have. Oh man, now now you got me dreaming. Rose gold <laughs> accessories. That'd be really cool. <laughs> oh yeah, rose gold trackpad. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be pretty fun. Ooh, so fresh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, again, this, it, uh, there comes a point where I, like, 
I'm able to put up with a certain level of my own ridiculousness. And like when my family comes to visit and it's a sudden slap in the face, just how ridiculous I am as I'm explaining sort of how the lighting works in my home and how I've added, you know, three new gadgets to my system and check out what this does and watch how this goes. And if you pull on this, this goes up and this goes down and a tiny band of robotic penguins come out and do a dance in front of the fireplace. And it's like, I can put up with that ridiculousness, but if if somebody were to come back into my office and I'm showing it and I'm like, yes, and then here is a $13,000 machine I bought, I would just burst into flames in my own embarrassment <laughs> because it'd just be so stupid. But yeah, that would be so ridiculous. I can't even put up with that level of, of uh, irresponsibility. So uh, to those of you out there who can use this machine, get this machine, use it, tell me about it. Um, and I will watch you, you know, walk into the flames and walk out the other side. I think there's a Game of Thrones reference in that, but I don't know <laughs> Game of Thrones enough to know. Like you're holding a dragon egg or something. The something like that. Yeah, mother of iMac Pros. <laughs> an iMac Pro and I got a hand. <laughs> now we've just gone into an iMac Pro in every basket. Uh, oh. we've, we've gone back into politics. Let's 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 get back away from that, guys. Uh, yeah, a binder full of iMac Pros. Oh no, no. <laughs> um, so, in short, none of us are getting an iMac Pro. I think Renee is. Oh, the Renee mostly, will. Yeah. But Renee, Renee also experiments with enough uh, enough video and development stuff that I feel like it's not entirely ridiculous. Uh, Do you think our pals of... at uh, VR heads will? Do you think Russell will? Oh, that's a good. So I actually I have I have a question into Russell about this. We should have had him on the podcast. Yeah, <laughs> uh, maybe next week. Yeah, so Russell, of course, has been Russell Holly has been reviewing a whole bunch of VR stuff for us and for VR heads. Um, and he's currently looking at which VR headset is going to work the best for uh, for the iMac Pro because, of course, a the iMac Pro can support VR, which is pretty darn cool, uh, and b it can support developing VR, uh, which we saw, of course, a demo of at the WWDC, which was pretty awesome. Um, but it, it's a great machine for that. Uh, so the question of whether or not he wants that or he'll stick with his current implementation on the Mac, which is an eGPU kit attached to his MacBook Pro, which in my opinion, I feel like that's probably the better way to go for people who want VR. Or if you already have an iMac, or if you're like, you want an iMac, but you don't necessarily want the iMac Pro, get a top of the line 27 inch iMac because that card will also support VR. There you go. So you don't even have to make the jump to the uh, catch flames and embarrassment machine to get VR. Thank goodness. As, uh, <laughs> as much as, as pretty as that machine is, I do really enjoy spending time around it. It's, uh, it's Does it very have its own nice. warmth? You, can you like... know what? It's surprisingly cool. <laughs> With those <laughs> fancy fans. That's true. Uh, no, it's, yeah. I, uh, I feel like I'm like speechless. I'm not I'm a machine. No, it's, a, it's such a, a really solid piece of kit for people who have been wanting this. That it's a nice gesture from Apple, and no, it's not user upgradable. I mean, you can get an Apple authorized service center to upgrade the RAM at a later date, but it's it's not user upgradable the pe the way people really want a pro machine. Um, but it is still an excellent machine for pros, assuming that you don't really care about like the super user upgradability uh, aspect. This actually is going to future proof your workflow for a while. And the fact that Apple's coming out with an eGPU enclosure in the coming months means that you'll be able to upgrade your graphics card interface. I think there was something, something crazy like people are uh, testing two, three, and four eGPUs running simultaneously <laughs> on these things wow. to help uh, expedite uh, VR graphics. And that's uh, blown my mind a little bit. But apparently, that is possible. So. If you're if you're on that spectrum, if you're on the pro spectrum where you're just like, I just need to experiment and do a crazy amount of stuff, uh, the iMac Pro could still be for you. We'll see. Anyway, enough about the iMac Pro um, because I, if I talk about it anymore, I'm just gonna devolve. Uh, why Catch don't fire. we talk? Yeah, exactly. Uh, why don't we talk about some Mac software? 
Uh, specifically, there's been a, a pesky rumor. Um, this is not the first time we've heard this rumor, uh, but a rumor that the iTunes store, uh, more specifically the music store, is going away in 2019. So, hmm. Serenity, you probably know a lot hmm. more about this than I do. Where Where is this rumor coming from? So, supposedly... The Grinch. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> supp supposedly, uh, there are a couple of highly placed confidential sources um, that gave a report to, I want to say, Digital Music Network. I, am, I think that was it. Yeah. I'm probably making that uh, making a mistake on that, and I'm sorry to the publication. It's not that I don't respect you guys. Uh, it's just that I think this report is silly. Uh, so they uh, reportedly have a couple of confidential sources who came to them first, uh, I believe in 2015, with the same rumor saying, oh, the music store is going to be phased out uh, 20, you know, 2017, 2017 or 2019. Uh, and they reported that, and that prompted Apple to give a very blatant not true to Recode. Uh, and then two years later, we see this pop up again in 2017, where it's like, this benchmark didn't hit. Well, maybe 2019 is going to hit. Uh, and based on the report, there's no real indication in the report that says. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I heard the, <laughs> I heard the le the snowblower, and it just, I, I wasn't sure if it was Alexa going off in the background. Or... <laughs> Sorry, pod podcast listeners, this will be yeah, cut out. Sorry, video listeners. This. Yeah, video listeners that just saw me freeze in a very strange, like... And then say the A word as well and set off all of their devices. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. <laughs> My birthday! Yeah, you get you get, you get, get a couple free passes on your birthday. I, get a couple yeah. Free, yeah. I think you have one more on the punch card. But it's my birthday! <laughs> uh, That's the name of the podcast. Arcana. Yeah. Uh, anyway, going back to this. Uh, so the, in 2017, now they've published this new report, um, which in reading the report, I cannot find anything that actually says that it's a new report that it's not just the same sources republished. There's no indication really that that makes lends me to believe that the sources have come back and been like, no, it's really happening in 2019. Uh, I could be absolutely wrong on this. This is just me trying to read tea leaves of a very obtuse report. Uh, but I, again, Apple came out and said, not true, this time to nine to five Mac. Um, and I am not surprised because I don't think, even with Apple Music making huge gains and even with the majority of people going over to purchase music, I just don't see it happening. I don't yeah. see people suddenly throwing up their hands and being like, no, you know, we're, we're just going to What's the benefit? This. Yeah. Well, I don't, so I don't understand I, what the benefit would be. There's, there is something to talk about in, in the music streaming trend that has taken over listening, music listening. Uh, it's, uh, you know, I grew up with, you know, vinyl and then moved on to tapes and then moved on to CDs. And now we've moved on to just literal digital music that you don't own a physical copy of at all. And then moved into listening to digital music that you don't own at all. And I, I imagine that the, the music industry, not, not, distributors of music like Apple, but actual like creators of the content, how, how, are, how are they navigating this new world of trying to make money when they're not even selling music? And I know that it's, people are still buying music, even direct digital form, it's still happening, but it's not at the level that it used to be. No. So, so how, you know, this is like a, a new world for, for for the music industry to tackle and i'm sure even though um apple's not getting rid of itunes the itunes store i'm sure that apple is considering how they're going to navigate this future world where people are buying music less and um subscribing to music um stre streaming music services more i guess the change would come if and only if the cost outweighs the you know the the money that they would be making uh at which point you know if, if you can't support selling the music for whatever reason 
on the money that you get from selling the music, then I think at that point they would. But like up to that point, I still think it it just like it makes the most sense to continue to sell music if people are buying it and if it's not costing you any money. If you're earning money on it, um, it to me doesn't make sense to get it to go away unless the idea is to drive, you know, it's an actual sort of driving people to Apple Music um, subscriptions or something like that. Uh, but if they can still make, you know, fourteen ninety nine on an exclusive album purchase that comes with a little iTunes booklet and all that jazz, uh, I would think that it would still continue to do that. Um, but I mean, this this doesn't count for for Apple itself. But I, for you know, specific special albums that I very much like, I will buy the vinyl and and get all the cool stuff that comes with it and the t-shirt and the uh, all that jazz. And and that's a whole, you know, th there's still reasons, I guess, to, to go about getting physical media, but I certainly see what you're saying. Like it is on the, on the out, uh, at the forefront of being on the out. Um, so I guess we're just waiting sort of for the time at which it just makes more sense business wise for them to 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 get rid of it but it's sort of a happens. brave new world of of music it's it's kind of a silly thing to say but um it's it's an it's an unknown future right now so what you're you know michael what you're saying is if they if they can continue to sell a 1499 album then why not continue to sell a 1499 album it doesn't cost them any extra to sell it but and yes that's true but i think we're sort of in this unknown future right now where they may not even be able to make enough money to make a record to stream it on a, a digital mm. st streaming service if they're not making money off of selling music if if everyone stopped buying music and only streamed music how is the music industry making any money now I have plenty of problems with the music industry and how much money they take for themselves at the expense of the artist who is the one who creates the music. We can talk for an hour just about that. But I'm specifically speaking to digital media, buying versus renting, I guess you can say, by by using a streaming service and how that's going to affect our future. And you know, I've always considered Apple to be at the forefront of of being ready for the next change in music. Mm. They've, they've really established themselves as one of the most important music streaming services, um, music, digital music buying services, just a way to keep get your music to your own headphones mobile. They've always been at the forefront of that kind of technology. And, you know, as as things change, they're gonna be there. They, like I, in, two, in 2019, if they get rid of the iTunes store, it will be because nobody's buying digital music anymore and that will make sense. So yeah. I, it's not gonna be that, you know, millions of people are still buying digital music and iTunes just says, meh, we're over it. That's not gonna happen. If it happens, it's going to be because not enough people are buying music to, to make that justifiable. This is the next uh, headphone jack <laughs> decision where it's going to have a thousand op-eds yeah. about why it's a bad idea. See, my my take on it is similar in that I don't think that they're going to get rid of it as long as it's profitable, especially when you think about the fact that um, essentially bandwidth-wise, it's not costing them a whole lot of extra money to host these files. Um, iTunes has been streaming-based for a while now, even when you've purchased the song, you know, you can download it locally to your computer. Uh, but I, I have to imagine that the way that the DRM encoding works now, it's not that there's a DRM song held on the server and a non-DRM song held on the server. I think there's probably just a middle layer that encodes as it goes out, depending on whether or not you're delivering, again, a streaming, a streaming uh, download to somebody who's using Apple Music versus somebody who's purchased uh, their, their album. So that with that, delivery system in place, I can't see Apple just being like, well, we've invested so much time in this, we're just going to throw it away, uh, as long as they're still making enough money to support it, uh, which I feel like they will be for quite some time. Your your point, Laurie, about how you make money in the music industry is completely valid, because it's, it's a disaster, and you, know, you look at up-and-coming artists, you look at 
everything that happened with Patreon in the last week, which is a whole other topic that we can save for a, for another. Lord. Yeah, another show date. But the the simple fact of the matter is, it's not. You know, it was never easy to make money as a up and coming music artist. But now I think it depends more than ever on your fan base and on cultivating, you know, a, a, a local group that really cares for your music and respects your music because those are the people who are going to buy things, whether it's music, whether it's, you know, accessor accessories, <laughs> t-shirts uh, and band merch and all of those, those sorts of things or Patreon accounts. Um, that's something that if Apple wants to figure out how to solve, they certainly have the potential resources for it, but I don't think that's really what their wheelhouse is looking to do. Instead, where I like look at this report and I say, okay, maybe this has some validity. It's not that I think the music store is going to disappear, but I do think that iTunes should die a fiery death. <laughs> um, Explain yourself. Tell us how yeah. you really feel. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, iTunes, uh, iTunes has gotten a lot better with its most recent version. But when it comes down to it, iTunes is not a great piece of software, uh, especially for interacting with, uh, with your iPhone. When you consider the way that the iPhone has broken out its component parts into separate entities, uh, looking at the music app in particular on the iPhone, the music app is for your locally downloaded music that you have purchased from iTunes that's stored in iCloud library, but also your Apple music, but also there's no way for you to get to the iTunes store. Like that, that is really bad design on Apple's part. Um, and part of it is, oh, well, we want to encourage people to go to Apple Music, obviously. Uh, but I actually think there's a good middle ground here. Um, and it's something that we've already kind of seen Apple do on the TV side, um, which is I would really like to see the music app look more like the TV app, where it's, oh, you want to listen to this song? Here it is on Apple Music, here it is on the iTunes Store, here's this buy button, here it is on Spotify, here is it, here is a station on it on Pandora. Tap the thing that you would like to do. Um, and that is turns, a fantastic idea. Right? The all the the all in one beautiful music app. So I think that when uh, the Digital Music Network gets rumors like this, I don't think it's we're going to kill the music store. I think what it is is probably we are going to kill a bunch of jobs relating to the iTunes store because we're going to reorganize it the same way that we did with our television and movies content. Uh, so I can see people like I can see there being angry people who might, you know, have a grudge and send information uh, uh, publications way. But I don't think we're getting the whole picture or the whole story. I don't think yeah. that the music store is in any danger of disappearing into smoke. Uh, I think we'll, we'll we'll be okay. We'll be okay, guys. We'll get there. Also, buy vinyl. That solves everything. Also, buy vinyl. Oh, I have I I bought my very first personal record player last year, and honestly, oh. it's lovely. It's oh, really that's great. great. Oh yeah. yeah, I I have um, two sort of broken record players in my garage. One good record player in my closet, and one record player that I used to listen to. Uh, my records with so yeah <laughs> I'm a huge fan of record players and vinyl and all you if I showed you it's literally a wall of vinyl it's no joke it says those calyx um as uh, uh, shelvings it's the huge one oh, that yeah. has it and we have two we have one huge one one single row and one triple row or maybe yeah triple row completely full of records <laughs> we have a lot of records in our house you have chosen wisely <laughs> <laughs> hey before we hit that next topic i would like to tell you all about our dear friends at thrifter thrifter is a new way to save money on everything from gadgets to home goods by shopping based on value not hype Sign up at thrifter.com. Oh, did you hear that plosive? Sign up at thrifter.com and get thoughtfully selected tech deals from places like Amazon and Best Buy daily without all the fluff, all the stuff, none of the fluff. I want to tell you all about the awesome deal that's on thrifter.com right now. You can go ahead and uh, get prepared for tonight, stretch out on your favorite overstuffed sofa, and read some 
Star Wars graphic novels. There are 25 Star Wars graphic novels, all for a dollar each. That's awesome. And another cool thing is the TP-Link smart plug, which is only 20 bucks right now. It's usually 30, sometimes it's even more expensive than that. Right now you can get it for $20. One of the things I love about Thrifter is that they've always got not only just like the latest deals and the coolest deals, but deals that relate to things that are going on right now, like that Star Wars deal. And when Black Friday came around, they've had a lot of deals for that. I imagine there are going to be some great holiday deals as we creep ever closer to the end of the year gift giving season and uh, maybe even some deals to celebrate the new year. So keep it locked to thrifter.com for all the deals, again, it's all the stuff, none of the fluff, with the best tech deals from places like Amazon and Best Buy. Head there to thrifter.com. Thanks so much, friends and pals over at Thrifter, for uh, making me spend way too much money all the time, uh, but you know, making sure that I save a little bit of money in the process. To expand just a minute because of Star Wars on that... Um... $1 graphic novel. First of all, I own physical copies of every one of those um, graphic novels. I, I own the, the individual um, issues because <laughs> that's how awesome they are. And they're all really good. They're worth way more than a dollar. But um, you can also get the Star Wars six film collection in HD on iTunes for only $79.99 right now. That's a really great deal. I think it's usually $99.99. So um, you're getting a pretty good deal if you if you don't already own a digital copy of Star Wars, which if you don't, you should. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty pretty nice deal. So get get your Star Wars on right now. Do it. Make it happen. Hey get, now, your Star Wars get your Star Wars on. on. Get your Star Wars on. I, all right. I, I it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there's your last punch card. You're done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's only twelve. <laughs> the the last one for the show. You you yeah. got you got uh, you refresh every hour. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Okay, so we're we're almost done for the day, but I did want to give a quick mention to a new app that just launched today, Play Dead's Inside. It's by the guys that did the team that did um, Limbo. I just barely started playing it this morning, so I don't have a lot to say. It's actually been out, I believe, on Xbox. Like the uh, game Xbox where you one. walk under a stick. Uh, I, I'm making a joke about limbo. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. that didn't quite get it. and didn't quite nail that joke. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the stick went right over your head. So I guess I did. <laughs> you did a great limbo bend there. Uh, sorry, continue. Um. So uh, I I it's absolutely love it. It's <laughs> Well, your birthday is coming up soon. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, no, I've already punched a punch card for my birthday. <laughs> Gotta save it. Preemptive. <laughs> your hour resets. Don't worry. You're okay. Um, so it's free to download, and you can play the first um, the first chapter uh, for free. Um, I highly recommend it if you are a fan of the game Limbo and you're not dancing under a stick <laughs> in Limbo. It's almost exactly like it, but it's... It's so much more beautiful, believe it or not. It's also very dark, so let me just put it out there. If you're disturbed at images of death. Is um, there a dog that dies? There, there, well, so far, there's not a dog that dies, but um, your character suffers um, death <laughs> um, when he gets caught. So if, you, if, if, that, if images of death disturb you, don't, don't download this game, because it's, it's not bloody, but I mean, it, it happens. Death happens in the. You're in worrying this game. me. But it's, it's pretty dark. It's so beautiful, and the the movement of the character is so fluid and smooth, and, and the puzzles are very similar to the way they were in Limbo, where you're, you know, you have to climb up one thing and get to another thing to get to another thing. It it has, um, sort of backward replayability, and that as you move forward in. In, in um, levels, you actually can go back and collect things in earlier levels. So um, if you, again, are you, if you're a fan of Limbo, you should definitely check out Inside. And I will definitely have a more in-depth review later because I you know, just had less than an hour to play it before I got on this um, podcast this morning, so. <laughs> Well, limbo, limbo, limbo. Or no, not that's not the most recent. Limbo is limbo is the old one. Get inside. Limbo is, limbo is great, but inside is also pretty great. <laughs> yeah, that's a good plug. 
Um, also, software that came out this week, um, underscore David Smith, came out with a new, really amazing update to Workouts Plus uh, Plus, which, again, if you use your Apple Watch, uh, you're going to want to check out this update, uh, especially because the app is now free. Uh, it is like Carrot Weather. It has a bunch of super customizable interfaces so that you can run workouts and see a whole bunch of information on your screen at present, including your top heart rate, your average heart rate, uh, your the couple, uh, your total calories burned, your calories burned per minute. Like there are a whole bunch of statistics. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, and if it helps you helps motivate you through a, through a tough workout, uh, definitely definitely check out this app. Uh, and Focus, an app that we've mentioned before, just got a really nifty update with a new HDR feature uh, so that you can actually just do it with the photo itself. You don't have to you know, have a bunch of photos to, to make that happen. Uh, Focus does some pretty nifty things, and uh, that's the most recent feature that you can check out. And then it's also just fun to hit that little effect thing at the top and see the, the depth uh, the depthiness of, of the photos that you take. So if you didn't check out Focus yet, go give that a look and uh, check out the new HDR feature that got added there. <clears throat> Very cool. Well, I think that brings us to the end of our show, our, our supersized December 14th show. Uh, I am been Serenity Caldwell. I almost said I've been I've Renee Ritchie. Yeah. <laughs> since it's your birthday. It's I, okay. You can be Renee Ritchie for your birthday. I don't know because Renee is well. I'll I'll be Renee long enough to eat that sugar fina and to have that? the iMac Pro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's mine. Okay, uh, silliness level receding. <laughs> this has been the iMore Show, ladies and gentlemen. I've been Serenity Caldwell. Uh, I uh, exist at on the internet at Saturn S E T T E R N on. Facebook, on Twitter, and Instagram, and I'm apparently losing my mind as part of turning 30. Um, Lori Gill, where can people find you on the internet? Um, they can find me at um, WX New Banana Face. <laughs> <laughs> also, Is it your birthday, too? Uh, you can find me uh, at Appaholic on Twitter. That's A P P A H O L I K. You can find me at Lori Gill at most of the other social things. You can find me watching Star Wars The Last Jedi tonight. Yes. And Micah Sargent, where can people find you on the internet and elsewhere? Uh, if you are looking for any of the stuff that I do, you can go to chihuahua.coffee. That's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A dot -A coffee, which has links to all of my social sites as well as uh, links to the stuff I do like podcasts. Uh, right now, I'm going to plug, um, I'm doing a fundraiser for my birthday that's coming up for the ASPCA. Uh, which is why I don't like it when the dog dies at the end. Um, that is the uh, American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. So uh, if you're feeling a little happy this holiday season and you want to give to a charity, uh, I encourage uh, making a donation to the ASPCA uh, for all the animals out there who <laughs> are innocent and um, could, could use your help. Yeah. Let's let's take care of the the sad puppies, kittens, snakes, and other horses, other various especially horses. especially given everything that's happened in California with the wildfires. There have been mm -hmm. a lot of animals that have been displaced, um, and yeah, whether you give it to the ASPCA or to local charities in your region. Yes, um, we hope and with the winter months coming up as yes. well, and also people like to give pets as gifts, and that's not a good thing because a lot of times people end up doing, not wanting the pet. It's it's a good time right now to be looking at um, you know your local humane society and stuff like that as well. If you're yeah. if you're into animals, <laughs> that's yeah. that's my plug. To quote Sia, <laughs> puppies are forever, not just at Christmas. There you go. <laughs> Sia knows. Yeah, Sia knows. All right. Well, thank you all for listening. You guys are, as always, the best. And uh, thank you for putting up with all of our Last Jedi and birthday related <laughs> insanity. Um, we hope you have a nice weekend. And thank you, last but certainly not least, uh, to the the person who edits all of our nonsense into coherent podcasts, Jim Metzendorf. He's fantastic. Uh, thank you in advance for everything, uh, and thank you for everything that has gone by. And with that, dear Imor, may the force be with you. And with you.
Bye. Bye. Bye.